I hit a deer with my 74 Plymouth Duster. Now, pretty bummed. I haven't been doing too much about it. But I did start my claim with my Haggerty Insurance. Now, I've heard a lot of real good things about them and the way they treat classic car owners. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put together a little video just sharing my my experience from start to finish on the Haggerty Auto Insurance Claim. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, it's gonna be 100% honest. They don't know I'm doing this. They're certainly not sponsoring me to do this, but I have been paying fees to them for six years. So I'm really curious how this whole thing is gonna turn out. I do have a good friend who actually had a heart attack and he was driving his 66 Coronet and he slumped over from the heart attack, pinned it, slammed into the back of a vehicle. Now he did have a Haggerty auto insurance claim and it went extremely well for him. So I'm cautiously optimistic that mine's gonna go well too, but we'll see. And like I say, this will be 100% honest opinion of mine regarding dealing with Haggerty Classic Car Insurance. So this is the damage. I don't know how well this is going to show up in video, but uh, yeah, she's pretty mashed up because that's what a deer's ass does when it hits the side of your duster. Uh, the hood is crinked there and right there. The grill is actually broken right in behind there where it bolts on, but the uh, headlight door looks okay. The only thing wrong with that headlight is just the plastic adjuster screw nut broke out. It looks a whole lot worse than it is. But uh, so far the damage doesn't seem too, too bad. I guess we'll see what the adjuster says. So my initial emails and communication phone calls with the, uh, the rep for Haggerty, who is actually a, a third party outfit called Aviva here in Canada. But anyway, they've been so far excellent. Uh, my, my initial report to Haggerty was really good. My initial discussions, phone conversations and emails with Aviva have been very good. But the first thing that's kind of got me curious, it might go either way, it might go really well, it might go not so really well. But anyway, instead of sending out an appraiser to actually physically look at the car, they had me take photos and email them back to them and uh, that's what they're going to do their appraisal based on the the damage appraisal that is so I'm curious how this is going to go I don't I hope it's not a problem but it's just something that seems kind of odd to me so we'll see still cautiously optimistic that everything's going to go well with this but that's just my first potential nervous moment but let's see hopefully it'll all still work out they told me that within 48 hours I should have a phone call from the appraiser based on the photos just to discuss the the amount of the damage etc etc so stay tuned we'll uh We'll see where it goes from here. So within 48 hours of submitting the photos to be appraised, I did receive a quote back from insurance telling me how much money they felt it would cost to repair the car. It came out at like just shy of 4,500 bucks. I'm afraid that's going to be a little bit tight, but 
what my body shop guy indicated to me in his past dealings with these guys, he's been able to go back to them referencing this and explain to them that he needs more money for this, that, and the other thing. Now, a couple of issues that I kind of see here, they're, they're showing on this detail. I'm not going to give you any detail on it really, but a couple of places where they're going to quality replacement parts where I know for a fact that the replacement parts aren't available. I mean, they do show them as available or as AMD parts or whatever, but AMD isn't currently producing, isn't currently supplying them. So I'm not sure how that's going to go um, in regards to we're going to be searching out some some good used sheet metal. Now, all my sheet metal is super high quality Texas sheet metal. That's where the car came from. There's not a lick of rust on it anywhere. And I'm going to make sure that that's what it is coming out of here. So anyway, still nothing negative to report. They're very comprehensive in their repair quote. I just now got to get together with my body shop guy and see where we're going to go from there. So it's been a couple of weeks since I've really had much to do with my Haggerty insurance claim. Fortunately, I'm able to drive my car, so I'm not in quite such a big rush or concern to get it done. I, I don't really believe that Haggerty has been holding me up or holding us up. I've been in constant contact with the body shop guy that's doing the work for me now. I keep calling him a body shop guy. He actually runs a pretty high-end restoration shop that's pretty much solely focused on Mopar muscle cars. Um, and as a rule, a lot nicer stuff than my car. So anyway, everything that I'm getting from this point is kind of second-hand information because he is dealing with insurance dealing with the people at Aviva himself and it's he's he's claiming he's had no issues so I'm happy with that they're just going back and forth trying to sort out exactly the costs etc of the actual repair work there's a little bit of stuff missed apparently in their initial quote so I'm super glad I didn't choose the option of just uh, taking the money that they were offering and paying to have the work done, which which was an option. It was whatever the whatever the dollar figure was, forty five hundred bucks and some change. If I wanted right away, I could have had that money in my pocket. Say, had I been choosing to do the work myself or anything like that. So if that would have been the case, that would have been fine. But because of the fact that I am getting it done at a shop, and like I said, again, a fairly high-end shop, there are going to be some additional costs and just things that weren't on the quote. So I'm, I'm glad that I've got Todd in my corner and that he's, at, he's working with insurance to ensure that I get everything done the way it needs to be done. One other thing I wanted to mention is I, as soon as I had the accident, I put some feelers out there on the different uh, places that people find parts these days. And I was able to source really nice, high quality replacement parts, not new, but excellent, good used parts. So, uh, I ended up kind of jumped the gun. I purchased those parts and fortunately my shop is going to be able to use those parts. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, fortunately, whatever I found the parts, I paid what I had to pay, which ended up being fairly top dollar for those parts. And I guess that's maybe part of the slow going process with dealing with insurance and sorting out a final dollar figure. I don't care about making money on the parts that I found or in actuality, I'm likely going to lose them, lose money on them. 
based on what insurance believes the new parts are worth compared to what I had to pay for the quality of parts that I was wanting to use. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. That's that's a watch for me. And I didn't have to do that. My shop would have done that for me and it wouldn't have been a deal at all. Anyway, that's one big thing. If you're dealing with a classic car insurance, be prepared when it comes to sourcing parts. It's not always going to be the easiest thing you're going to be able to do to ensure that you get high quality parts. I mean, everybody knows AMD is making less and less stuff and different and different stuff all the time. So you just you're at times you're going to have to take and get what you can get. And that is definitely going to be reflected on your on the work that happens with your car. So in this picture, you can see the sheet metal I was able to get after the shop prepped it. It looks really nice. I'm super happy with what I was able to find. Now overall, my experience has been good. The communication was good and timely. The ability to choose my own shop was great. I wasn't required to go out and get multiple quotes and screw around like that, trying to get you know the best price quality of the repair was what's most important to me. And that's what I was able to do. They were timely in their responses, both to the shop and to me when we went back and forth with them in communication. The insurance, they were agreeable on the additional costs required by the shop. There was just no complaints. They just, they understood that's what it was going to require to do a quality repair job. So they were, they were good about that. Now, they were low on the initial dollar figure for the repair. Some things were missed, possibly because of the photos instead of the in-person damage appraisal. I don't know. But I will say, if I had jumped on that first amount of money they offered, and they would have. They would have given had money in my pocket within 72 hours, I'm sure. But had I done that? I just screwed myself over and I'm glad I didn't go that route. But I will say, overall, I've been happy with the experience and everything that's happened. So I guess that's it. Um, just waiting on the shop to be able to fit me in. They're doing their best to pre-prep all the parts and have them ready to go to minimize the amount of time that the car is down. Now, I am still driving the car which is super nice. It's been kind of funny when you do take it out to a, a little cruise or a show, everybody sure wants to talk about the damage and where that came from. So it's, it's been kind of interesting to be honest with you. I'm ready to get it fixed and back to the way it should be. Anyway, I hope you got something out of that. As far as my experience with Haggerty, I'm a fan. Uh, you know what it's like lots of times, Outfits are willing to take your money, take your money, take your money. But when it's time to give some back, they're not quite so agreeable. In this instance, they were really good to me. So that's all I can go by. Anyway, thanks for watching.